Hello, and welcome to the Equity Leads Request for Applications webinar. My name is Anissa Sonnenberg. I am the Education Administrator of the System of Support Office at the California Department of Education. I'm David Tawson, a Senior Advisor with the California Collaborative for Educational Excellence. So as we get started here, we wanna let you know that this webinar follows our request for applications. So if you wanna follow along with the slides, um, you may do so. And also um, we are following um, 508 compliance for our visually impaired and we'll be reading the slides verbatim. So let's go ahead and get started. Introduction, the California Department of Education CDE and the California Collaborative for Educational Excellence, CCEE, invite interested local education agencies, LEAs, for example, county offices of education, COEs, or school districts, and consortia of LEAs to apply to be named as an equity lead. The selected equity leads are encouraged to carry out their work in partnership with institutions of higher education, nonprofit education service providers, or community-based organizations. Section one, overview, pages five through seven of the RFA. Background and goals. The equity leads were established in 2023 under Senate Bill 114, section 79, chapter 48 of the statutes of 2023 as part of California's statewide system of support, system of support as a key lead initiative with an annual, with, with a $2 million annual investment. The equity leads will prioritize schools receiving equity multiplier funding and are tasked with the following. Bullet one, partnering with LEAs to analyze programs, identify barriers and opportunities, and implement actions and services to meet the identified needs of all pupils, including by address addressing racial disparities. This shall include enhancing and expanding existing work in these areas. Bullet two, supporting the work of LEAs in developing and implementing programs and supports that address racial disparities and opportunities and academic outcomes. Bullet three, identifying existing resources, including support for educator preparation, recruitment, retention, and professional development activities, instructional coaching, and other efforts currently available to address disparities, including racial disparities in pupil outcomes and sharing these resources with local education agencies. Bullet four, monitoring the impact of implementation of local control and accountability plan, LCAP goals for the equity multiplier schools and reporting on the best practices developed and outcomes. Selection. The CCEE and the CDE will select between two and four equity leads with approval from the Executive Director of the State Board of Education, SBE, by March 1st, 2024. The grant period begins July 1, 2024, and ends June 30th, 2029. Responsibilities. The equity leads selected for this work must demonstrate the capacity to do all of the following. Bullet one, work collaboratively with the CCEE, the department and other lead agencies in the system of support to advance the purpose of the system of support specified in subdivision B of section 52059.5. Bullet two, partner with other subject matter experts across the state, including but not limited to the Community Engagement Initiative, 21st Century California School Leadership Academy, California Community Schools Partnership Program, Regional Technical Assistance Centers, local literacy lead agencies, and system of support for expanded learning. Bullet three, develop and disseminate resources on effective practices for analyzing programs, identifying barriers and opportunities, and implementing actions and services to meet the identified needs of all pupils, including by addressing racial disparities.
bullet four, under the LCAP, and understand it. Bullet four, understand the LCAP and how to use the LCAP for strategic planning, including but not limited to by identify, identifying and analyzing available and relevant data to understand pupil needs and helping practitioners, educators, and interest holders understand the data. Assisting practitioners in implementing and monitoring changes to practice to meet the needs of all pupils, including by addressing racial disparities in opportunities and outcomes, and aligning to the technical assistance provided to LEAs, known as differentiated assistance, including diverse and underrepresented pupils, families, and communities in decision making processes in school settings. Bullet five, understanding the history of racial inequities in California, including, but not limited to, past policies related to segregation, immigration, education, and public safety and incarceration, and how it, inc how it currently impacts pupils in California. Eligibility requirements. The application may be submitted by an LAA on behalf of itself or on behalf of a consortia of LEAs. An LEA applying on behalf of itself or on behalf of a consortium of LEAs may carry out their work in partnership with institutions of higher education, nonprofit educational service providers, or community-based organizations that demonstrate the capacity to meet the statutory goals and responsibilities outlined herein. Thank you, David. I'll now be going over section two, accountability, which can be found on pages seven through nine of the RFA. Reporting requirements. The selected equity leads will be part of continuing collaboration amongst the system of support lead agencies, the CCEE and the CDE. The equity lead shall complete the following. One, a collective annual plan that outlines the work and goals aligned with the four responsibilities outlined in subdivision C of Education Code EC section 52073.5, see Appendix B. Two, data requested by CCEE and CDE in support of any external evaluation as applicable. Three, annual year end reports. Four, mid-year progress check-in with CDE and CCE and a progress report. Five, budgets and expenditure reports. And six, other reports as requested by CDE and CCEE. Program deliverables. The selected equity leads are required to participate in the system of support meetings, which occur two to four times per year. Additionally, selected equity leads will jointly deliver the following to the CDE and CCEE. Number one, an annual report that identifies the LEAs and schools that have been supported by the grant and a high level overview of the work completed and underway at each location aligned with the four responsibilities outlined in Subdivision C of EC Section 52073.5, see Appendix B. These reports must be completed annually and no later than six weeks after the conclusion of the fiscal year. Two, a guide for LEAs that Summarize the best practices and strategies for implementation to improve racial equity and positive outcomes through the LCAP process. Names barriers to implementation of best practices for achieving racial equity identified in the course of providing support to LEAs and schools and provides recommendations on how to address those barriers at multiple levels. Is written for both LEA and community member audiences and last is complete no later than three months after the conclusion of the grant period. Allowable activities and cost. Equity leads will develop and submit annual budgets. The proposed use of grant funds 
will be reviewed and any items that are deemed not allowable, excessive, or inappropriate will be eliminated. Generally, all expenditures must contribute to the goals and objectives outlined in Section 1. Assurances. In addition to complying with all terms, conditions, and requirements specified in this RFA, the selected equity leads must also abide by the current general assurances and certifications on the CDE Funding Forms webpage located at https colon backslash backslash www.cde.ca.gov backslash FG backslash FO backslash FM backslash FF dot ASP. Applicants do not need to sign and return the general assurances and certifications with the application. Instead, they must download them and keep them on file to be available for compliance reviews, complaint investigations, or audits. The equity lead assurances are required to be signed and submitted as part of the grant award notification, which will include responsibilities, reporting requirements, and deliverables. If an equity lead fails to submit required reports, program activities are not completed, or there is a lack of participation in meetings, fundings for the equity lead could be reduced. Administrative indirect cost. The selected equity leads must limit total administrative indirect costs to the rate approved by the CDE for the applicable fiscal year in which the funds are spent. Any other entity providing services in partnership with an equity lead that are properly paid through the grant shall not be entitled to an administrative indirect cost rate greater than the rate approved by the CDE for the equity leads lead LEA. For a listing of indirect cost rates, visit the CDE indirect cost rate webpage at http colon backslash backslash www.cde.ca.gov backslash FG backslash AC backslash IC backslash. Thank you, Anissa. Section three, application procedures and process, pages nine through 12 of the RFA. Process for selection. The process for the selection of the equity leads is a multi-step process that will consist of the following. Bullet one, application, the forms A, B, and C, all interested LEAs or consortia meeting the eligibility requirements are required to develop and submit an initial application package per the requirements of Form B. Bullet two, presentation to demonstrate the ability to meet the goals and responsibilities of the equity leads. Bullet three, an interview. Application timeline, the activity followed by the due date. Request for applications, RFA, release date, November 27, 2023. Questions for RFA Q&As must be submitted on December 6, 2023. Answers for RFA Q&As will be posted December 15, 2023. Applications are due January 25, 2024. Applicant presentations via Zoom, February 7, 2024. Finalist interviews via Zoom, February 12, 2024. Announced equity leads will take place on March 1, 2024. Appeals received at the CDE April 1st, 2024. Email all application components listed on Form B. Application checklists as attachments no later than January 25, 
2024 to VA System of Support at vde.ca.gov with Equity Leads application in the subject line. Application review. All applications will be reviewed by CDE, CCEE, and SBE staff for completeness and quality up to 10 points. The applicant's experience collaborating within the system of support up to 20 points. The agency's LCAP philosophy and practices up to 30 points. A demonstrated history of addressing racial and ethnic disparities and opportunities and outcomes between different student groups up to 30 points and proposed partnerships up to 10 points. Each application will be read and scored by a minimum of two reviewers. The application review process will occur in February through March, 2024. Applications will be randomly assigned to readers taking into consideration any conflicts of interest. Readers will base their scores on the degree to which an applicant provides evidence that it meets the RFA eligibility and experience requirements. Readers will independently evaluate and score the applications using the scoring rubric, see Appendix A, and the two scores will, be, will then be averaged to determine a final score. The applicants with a final score of at least 70 will be invited to deliver a presentation to a panel consisting of representatives of the CDE, CCEE, and SBE to demonstrate their ability to meet the goals and responsibilities of the equity league. Applicants with a passing score from the presentation stage will be invited to a final interview. The rubric for presentations will be provided with the invitation to present. Questions and contact information. Prior to submitting questions to the CDE, Student Achievement and Support Division, please ensure that you have, one, read the RFA in its entirety. Two, review the questions and answers, Q&As, located at https colon backslash backslash www.cde.ca.gov backslash FG backslash FO backslash R16 backslash equity lead RFA dot ASP. Bullet three, viewed the RFA equity leads webinar posted on the CDE webpage at HTTPS colon backslash backslash www dot cde dot ca dot gov backslash fg backslash f zero f o backslash r sixteen backslash equity lead rfa dot asp all questions and correspondence should be submitted by email through the system of support help desk at CA system of support at cde.ca.gov using equity leads RFA in the subject line. Note, all questions regarding the RFA and related requirements need to be submitted by 5 p.m. on Friday, December 6, 2023. All submitted supplemental questions with answers will be posted as part of the Q&As located at https colon backslash backslash www.cde.ca.gov backslash fg backslash fo backslash r16 backslash equity lead rfa dot asp on friday december 15 2023 Appeals process. Applicants who wish to appeal a grant award decision must submit a letter of appeal no later than 5 p.m., no later than April 1st, 2024, to Equity Lead Application Appeals, California Department of Education, 
Student Achievement and Support Division, System of Support Office, 1430 N Street, Suite 6208, Sacramento, California, 95814-5901. Appeals are limited to the ground that CDE's action or actions violate a state or federal statute or regulation. The professional judgment of the application reviewers will not be considered on appeal absent a showing that CDE violated a statute or federal statute. I'm sorry. The professional judgment of the application reviewers will not be considered on appeal absent a showing that C that the CDE violated a state or federal statute or regulation. An applicant may be re represented by counsel. The letter of appeal shall include the following. Bullet one, a clear and concise statement of the actions being appealed. Bullet two, the legal authority, statute, and or regulation relied upon for the appeal decision. Bullet three, the specific evidence being submitted to support the appeal, and bullet four, the specific remedy sought. All right. And now we're on our last section of the RFA, forms and attachments, which can be found on pages A1 through B3. Form A, description of experience and capacity of the consortia. Form A contains two sections. Section one contains various insert fields for required applicant information. Section two contains applicant and consortium member certification that needs to be signed by the lead designee and co-lead designee or designees authorized signatories. Form B, applicant checklist. All interested applicants meeting the eligibility requirements are required to develop and submit an initial application package and signed at the bottom of Form B, application checklist. All required elements of the application package are included on the next slide. Letter of, in, um, I'm sorry, um, Form B application checklist. Um, number one is a letter of interest. Two, resumes of key personnel. Three, Form A, which is application information and certification. Section one, name and contact information at applicants and consortium members, and then also section two, which is the applicant consortium member certification. Number four, app, app, um, form B, application checklist, which is also signed and dated. And number five, form C, prompts, description of experience and capacity of the consortium. Please note that supporting documentation not to exceed 10 pages. Form C, prompts, description of experience and capacity of the consortium. Please respond to the prompts to describe the applicant's experience and capacity to serve as a system of support equity lead using aerial 12 point font, one inch margins and not to exceed five pages. Supporting documentation should not exceed 10 pages and may contain links to web pages or other resources to be considered. Form C, prompts description and experience and capacity of the consortia too. The answer to the prompts will be read and scored for the following categories. Number one, quality and completeness. Two, collaboration. Three, local control and accountability plan. Four, addressing racial and ethnic inequity and its impact on students. And five, proposed partnerships. Appendix A is a scoring rubric. Appendix A contains the application scoring rubric. Applications will be reviewed and scored for the following components. Number one, completeness 
for a total of 10 possible points. Two, collaboration, 20 total possible points. Three, local control and accountability plans, philosophy and approach, 30 total possible points. Four, addressing racial and ethnic inequities and its impact on students, 30 possible points. And five, proposed partnerships, 10 total possible points. Appendix B, California Education Code 52073.5. Appendix B is a legislative language that created the equity leads as part of the statewide system of support and is provided for your reference. Thank you. We'd like to thank you for um, being here today. All questions and correspondence should be submitted by email through the System of Support Help Desk at CA System of Support at CDE.CA.GOV using Equity Leads RFA in the subject line. Note, all questions regarding the RFA and related requirements need to be submitted by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, December 6th. All submitted supplemental questions with answers will be posted as part of the Q&As located at https colon backslash backslash www.cde.ca.gov backslash fg backslash fo backslash r16 backslash equity lead rfa dot asp on Friday, December 15th, 2023. Again, thank you for watching our webinar on the Equity Leads RFA.